Yes. I'm not a tech genius. I did not learn how to program and, and create a startup by age 12 and sell it for $40 million. I think we would have all loved that. So what happened? If in retrospect, if I was given an opportunity to explore my interests at a younger age, I believe that I would have had a better outlook to what my career could have looked like. But I got lucky. Despite my late start, I eventually found my, I eventually found my way into a, a career in technology, one that I'm very fond of today. I want to tell you a little story about myself. I was born and raised in Kuwait, and like most girls, I had a healthy social life and was very active in after-school activities. I participated in sports and I played music. But, I, but at the same time, I had a different interest than girls. Your average 10-year-old girl would ask her parents for toys and dolls to play with. But I had to be different, and I asked my dad for a computer. My father never knew where this came from, and he asked me, are you sure you don't want a Game Boy? It's like a computer. No, Baba. I want a computer. I want a gateway computer. You got to remember, this was the 90s. Gateways were in at the time. <laughs> he bought me my computer. And the day I got my computer was one of the happiest moments of my life. Imagine I was 10 years old at the time. In 1999, I stumbled across a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing service called Napster. Who remembers Napster? Yes. Yeah, we all remember Napster. For those of you who don't know Napster, Napster was one of the most disruptive, uh, disruptive companies that changed the face of the music industry. But also, it gave us access to free to download music. And at the time, this was amazing for us in Kuwait because the only way for us to own music was to purchase them. And even then, we didn't have a wide selection to, to purchase from. I saw this as an opportunity to create playlists for my family and friends and burn them into a CD. They loved it. Next thing you know, strangers were calling me up and asking me, Shayla, can you create a playlist for me? I was like, yeah, I'll make money off of it too. So I charged them a nominal fee. This business started to grow. And I realized this after school activity of mine um, grew to a tremendous uh, amount that I couldn't keep up. So with the extra cash that I made, I convinced my, mom, my mother to increase the broadband, inter, uh, broadband internet at home, and I invested in additional hardware that will help me burn these CDs faster. Now, <laughs> my day, uh, my, um, the business grew, and I realized that I needed to have a systematic approach to sustain this business. So I created a database of clients, took orders, and managed deliveries. Um, and with the content I found online, I also learned the basic skills of graphic design so I can create flyers and email shots. All of this helped me acquire and retain customers. This all sounds too organized today, doesn't it? I was 16. I had no idea what I was doing. All I knew was I was having so much fun with this hobby. I turned, I turned this hobby into what was a cash cow to my weekly allowance. In 2001, Napster was hit with a copyright lawsuit, and I realized that I was running an illegal entrepreneurial venture. <laughs> so I had to, obviously, I had to stop it. Despite the fact that this could have gotten me into so much trouble, I like telling people this story. Because I had so many similar ideas, like this one, that I, and, and business ideas that I wanted to pursue, and a lot more questions that came with it that nobody knew how to answer. So, I decided not to pursue any of them and went back to living a normal teenage life. At 18, it was time for me to graduate and go to college, and I had no clue what I wanted to do. I asked my mother what was the best career for me to, to, to go into, and she looked at me and said, Shayma, why don't you consider studying English so you can come back and teach at Kuwait University, and you'll, you'll make great money, and you'll get four months of the year off. Plus, this will give you more time to raise the kids kids. I love how my whole career plan was revolved around me raising my unborn kids. The interesting thing is I took her advice, I went off and I studied English, and I came back to Kuwait. But then I went through an existential moment, and I questioned the choices that I made in my life, and I realized that I based my whole career around my gender. And I questioned the very foundation of it and asked myself, why did my gender have to dictate what kind of career I can enter? Why couldn't I pursue my own interests despite my gender? So I decided to take cues from my earlier, earlier life and pursue a career in technology. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the teaching profession. In fact, it's a very uh, significant profession, one that educates our youth today. But this was not something that interested me. That's when I pivoted. 
I packed up my bags, went off and got a new degree, and eventually found my way into technology. Today I work at Yahoo. 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 I've been working in the field for about five years now, and during this time, I noticed there was a gender gap. And what was even more alarming is this gap widened as women were moving up towards managerial and leadership roles. Now, technology is an industry that is very progressive and innovative, and it creates products and user experiences for the mass, one half of which are women. Yet, the creators were predominantly males. So I didn't understand why women were dropping out in large rates, especially the fact that I worked so hard to get myself into the industry, women were leaving. I decided to investigate this further and uh, understand why this was the case so I can avoid any challenges that come my way. I couldn't find data to back this up, so instead I asked women who have been working in the industry for so long, why were you, what experiences have, would you, sorry, what experiences have you encountered that would trigger your departure early? And the responses that I heard from these women were interesting because they were quite similar. A lot of women believed that um, their family and friends didn't encourage them to enter the field in the first place because of the long working hours. But others believed that they were overlooked at during promotion period or they were underpaid. Hearing these women's stories and experiences was insightful and astonishing at the same time. I realized something. I realized that there was an overarching theme in the responses, that there was a lack of support and guidance to grow. In 2012, I was approached by Girls in Tech to start up a chapter in Dubai and grow it in the region. And I saw this was a perfect opportunity to, 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 to I saw this as a perfect opportunity to, to close this gender gap, but also give back to the community using my experience as a guide. I couldn't help but remember my younger self when I could have used such a platform to help me pursue my interests further. I am sure that today there's a girl out there that needs this kind of guidance to understand where her capabilities lies and what career she can choose. Today we have six chapters across the Middle East and we have various programs to help inspire girls towards a career in technology, but also develop a higher number of leaders in the field. I truly believe that by engaging more women in technology, collectively, we can build a successful economy and position this region in a competitive global landscape, one that is heavily tech-driven. In order for us to do so, we need to develop and promote five key areas. Youth development, talent pipeline, healthier workplace, entrepreneurship, and mentorship. The first initiative is obviously one that's really close to my heart, which is investing in a, uh, in a youth development program. In order for us to increase women's interest in technology, we need to do this at a younger age, preferably at school. To be honest, I don't believe that the educational system in this region supports this kind of encouragement, especially when we're still governed by generations that believe that traditional fields such as medicine, teaching, or even banking are the fields that women should be entering. Also, schools today need to adapt to the current economic state and incorporate new courses and methods such as programming, design, computer and data science, all, all, all these courses which will promote creative, uh, creative thinking and problem solving. By instilling these key learnings at a young age, a girl will develop the mindset coupled with skills to become innovators and problem solvers, eventually tomorrow's leaders. Doing so will only help us produce more talent, which brings me to my second point, creating a better talent pipeline. Because the industry is going, growing very quickly, many companies today are facing difficulties in acquiring talent. And Companies need to develop solutions that lie outside of their organization to overcome this growing demand and shortage. And an example of what they can do is invest in outreach programs by partnering up with universities and offering internships to students. That way, students can learn new skills that will eventually help them, uh, that will eventually increase the, the probability of them getting hired into a, into a tech company. Closing this gender gap should not only reside in, in hiring more women in, in the company, but also retaining talented women over, over a long period of time. To do so, we need to find the girl in technology. 
but not the technology in the girl, which brings me to my third point. Don't change the girl to adapt to the industry. Change the industry to adapt to the girl. Yes. Out of the top 100 tech companies today, only 6% of executives are females. With numbers like these, we'll never overcome this challenge. Companies need to create a healthier, healthier work environment that, that will allow women to balance the home and work life, but also nourish and flourish into uh, leadership roles. Fortunately, many companies in the Middle East have rolled out initiatives to support this challenge. Yahoo, for example, uh, extended the maternity leave from two months to four months, which is great for mothers. Dell rolled out an enterprise resource group called WISE, that stands for Women in Search of Excellence, that promotes uh, leadership within the workplace. Intel rolled out this beautiful program in North Africa called She Will Connect that aims to increase the internet penetration rate among girls and, and women. Investing in a girl's education at a young age also has alternative advantages. Entrepreneurship is such a powerful engine. Don't underestimate its benefits. <clears throat> Which brings me to my fourth point. Entrepreneurship is a great, great space for women to enter, especially women from the Middle East who do not feel comfortable uh, working with men. And also other women who are dropping out of the workforce before, enter, before, before, before uh, becoming leaders and managers. Through entrepreneurship, women can activate their economic role by creating new companies and increasing the employment rate. Research states that women-led tech companies generally achieve 35% higher return of investment. And when they're venture-backed, they, they, um, they drive 12%, they, they, um, they generate 12% more revenue than their male counterparts, yet women receive 4% of the total venture capital. What can we do to support these women excel in this space? What kind of resources and material can we offer them to, become, to succeed? Which brings me to my fifth and final point. Find a mentor and be a mentor. Mentorship is one of the most important uh, resources that women need to utilize today. The, the, the advantages of mentorship are numerous, but can only lead to success. So I encourage you all to find a mentor. Find a mentor that inspires you and pushes you out of your comfort zone and helps you to grow. Your mentor can be anyone, from your family, friends, or even your workplace. But also I encourage you to be a mentor. I'm sure you all have experiences and stories that you can share with, with younger girls. I want to wrap this talk by asking each and every one of you, how can you, as a father, as a mother, as a husband or even an employee in the organization, support the growth of women and the overall economy. Thank you very much.